Our seminar, um, Supporting Productive Engagement in Online Communities. I'm Lindsay, Danny and Laura. Um, it's, I was a bit frustrated, to be honest, um, right at the beginning because I noticed our seminar was slipped. We, we, we swapped from being in the middle to later on in the afternoon. But having just had the last two seminars, I think it's actually been really useful because so far we've looked at um, group work, and we've looked at engaging students. And really, ours follows on really logically from that, because what we're going to talk about is productive engagement in online communities. So in effect, we're going to talk about engagement, and we're going to talk about group work, but we're going to talk about how we, can, as, uh, sorry, as tutors, can facilitate productive engagement through online communities. So ours actually now follows on quite logically, so it's been a really good um, change us. So our aims overall are to consider which online communities students are using and how they're engaging in those communities. In other words, what group work or communities are out there and what are students doing. How to explore how we can support students to engage productivity productively in relevant online communities and consider how we might develop that in subject knowledge. And we're going to go about that by looking at what we're doing at the moment, why it's important that we change or we engage students productively, and think at the end of the seminar about ways in which we can achieve that. So hopefully, at the end of the session, we will be more aware of the importance of uh, supporting productive engagement, and we'll really understand what productive engagement means, because that's essential. They'll be aware of a variety of methods and ways of supporting our students to engage on, in online communities. And we'll have identified areas of our own subject knowledge that we need to develop, so we can engage and support our students' engagement in online communities online communities out there. <coughs> so, the first part of our seminar is looking at what we should be aiming for, what we're doing at the moment, and we're going to take a little bit of time, once we've considered that, to reflect on where we need to go next. first and fundamental thing we need to think about is what we mean by productive engagement. A little bit hard to see some of the smaller writing there. But we know from the five graduate attributes, we've talked about literacy, we've talked about 
communities, we talked about um, engaging students. But within digital literacy and the student experience, one of the key elements is ensuring that our students are digitally literate and they can engage. What I've done here is we've taken the information from I would say Rafferty, or I'm going to keep on saying Rafferty, but it's not. Um, the development of strategies for enhancing student experience, thinking about um, digital literacy as a graduate <coughs> attribute, and effects of manipulating it into a sort of Maslow type, sort of pyramid. And in essence, it's taken the statements and going from the bottom towards the top. So we are assuming that our students and ourselves, we have achieved functional access, we can functionally use um, computers, laptops, etc. Next stage, hopefully, we're confident in adapting our technology for academic use. We can use that technology to obtain high quality information, because that's what we need. But more importantly, we can then critically evaluate that information. Finally, and this is what we really want to talk about today, is that very top level element of Maslow, where we engage productively in relevant online communities. So it's no longer about actually being able to use the computer and access our laptop, and it's no longer about just being able to find some information and using what's given to us. What we want to consider is how we can ensure that our students engage productively. What does productive engagement look like? What should a digital liter digitally literate or illiterate <laughs> be able to do? What would they should be capable of producing if they're engaging productively in online communities? Any suggestions? I've got an old-fashioned pen and I've got these great two whiteboards. Um, what, do we, what, what do we think it means? What does engaging productively mean? What's engaging me? Anyone like to go and check? Participate actively. Participate. Anyone? I can't spell either. <laughs> Interact with others. Anything else? Gentlemen at the back, got a lot to say usually. Go on. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I can't believe you put me on the spot like this. <laughs> <laughs> you did it to everyone else, so. It's true, yeah. Is there a relevance in, in what's produced as well, so that it's pertinent to all the teaching? Okay. It's productive. So it's good, so. Relevant. Okay, go on. <laughs> so, relevant to learning outcomes or to the students' uh, future lives? Okay, so relevant. What about this engaging with online communities? It's not just. Yes, sorry, I just have a question. I see them really understand what exactly you mean by productively engaging in online community. I know you showed the pyramid before, but I'm still not quite clear. Okay, so... That was good, that was good. Yes, thank you. What we're saying is that if you've got um, information, so we access, you can access a computer, you can access yeah. information, you can adapt it, you can... This bit is not just about getting the information, it's about using it and manipulating that information within well, it's been the part of the conversation, yes. part of the discussion about it. It's about creating knowledge. knowledge. It's about creating, about creating knowledge, knowledge. Yes. that yeah. comes from discussion and that can be enhanced by discussion using online tools or using online communities. So you're sharing what broader, a broader knowledge, we're having access to and engaging in discussions yes. about the broader knowledge base. Right. Sort of remote group mm -hmm. work in a way. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not always so. You have all these forums where you have questions for a particular area and you are exchanging um, decisions about it. It can be very technical, it can be very general. So, so you have having discussions and sharing things with people that you wouldn't otherwise be discussing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of over and above what other opportunities yeah. you have. have access to many more people with, you know, with expertise. So, so what we've just. Sorry, I said, so you should be capable of doing what you do in class online? What you do online would be an extension of what you've done in class. So it gives you another platform of the further discussion, maybe 
be involved in the same people or other people as well. So if more people, in fact, even more people can use in the class. So it doesn't have to be restricted, it no longer has to be restricted to the class. So you can look at, to the, at the DEA and other people outside who are interested in studying your topic, and you can widen your knowledge. Sorry, would it involve communicating technical information as well, you know, quite effectively using online? Tools. I mean, that's Absolutely. what I, that's what I think. I think it would look different for different disciplines, yes. and it depends what your objective was with the class that you're using. So it could be for many different things. So, well, can I just ask, so my age, the difference between the online community and, say, ask the audience? So, you're saying you ask more people and have more people involved. What is, what is an online community? We're, we're, going to, we're actually going to look at the difference perhaps between a social network and then think about what an online community looks like a little later, yeah. yes? So I hope we hope to address yeah. that. Because there is, you're absolutely right, there's a distinction between just talking to people, like anyone, as a chief, you don't know who answers, and productive engagement, but hopefully it's a focused discussion with people that you're aware of and, who, who, and you're actually progressing your knowledge. Because you do need to have some sort of basis of how that is progressing. Does this sort of include things like webinars? Or, so webinars. 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 webinars, yes. Yeah, I'm getting on now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think, you know, I've done the conversations, they are marvellous yeah. things and opportunities for people to get together. I think they're yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. exactly that. It's about wait, yeah. widening, in effect, widening the classroom, yes. opening opportunity, and engaging our students through a technology that they probably understand sometimes better than we do. We're going to address that too. If we look at the Brooks Graduate Attribute List, I know we started off with some questions and we got a bit sort of sidetracked, but we didn't because participating actively, we ended up with a whole list of trying to define exactly what we mean by engaging <coughs> productively. The Brooks Graduate Attributes defines engaging productively in relevant online communities like this. So see, let's see where we were and how many, if any, match up. Selecting appropriate communication technologies for group work. We talked about that, the remote group work. Knowing when and how to maintain appropriate levels of privacy drafting and publishing to individuals and groups. It's about, again, how we share our work and understanding how we can share, and maybe some of the things we need to be aware of when we do share. So that, who are we talking to? Well, who are we sharing our information with? And that's why it's really important you are aware of the difference between the different social networking groups and what, and what you're actually using. Effective managing groups Interaction using multiple technologies. Again, looking at group work. Communicating effectively online. Developing fluency and command of voice in online authoring and publishing. Hopefully you can see that we are talking more than just accessing information using computers and seeing what's out there. We're talking more, we're talking more than going on YouTube, finding a nice clip and popping it into your presentation active engagement, productive engagement in online communities is about really being part of that community and part of that learning environment and that's what we're looking at today. <laughs> so when it comes to digital literacy, uh, how productively engaged on, in online communities are we? Uh, some of you may have responded to my survey. We sent out a survey monthly to all students on this course. Did everyone see the email? Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know. I answered it correctly. So I didn't understand the definition properly. <laughs> no, that's fine. I think most of the answers look quite as I expected, so I'm, I think you did. Um, we asked three questions, sort of. What was our personal use of online communities? So, which online communities were we using for ourselves? Um, which online communities or what did we use to engage students? <laughs> That's just as interesting as uh, what online communities do students 
we feed students using. We in the end had nine responses. We probably indicates that SurveyMonkey is not an actively engaging online community. Yeah? Um, but it is effective for what I wanted to do because not everyone is confident in using these communities and so I can email you a link. But it's not an online community. <laughs> if you can see that, this is our response. So the blue, the pale blue is our personal use, the red is the engaging students, and the green is what we're aware students are using. It's clear to see that we are aware that students are using a lot more than we're using as it comes to um, communities. We don't really use Facebook that much. These are every responses. Eh? Moodle, we're using a lot. Our students aren't using it as much as we are, and we're not even sure that they're using it as much as we are. We use a lot of specific academic communities. So we, I've lumped a couple of them, quite a lot of them together. So where you've listed a specific community, um, we had some healthcare ones and some uh, uh, fitness ones. I've put those together, so we've indicated a specific community. So we're using them professionally, but we're not encouraging our students to use them, perhaps, and our students aren't using them. Maybe we need to think about that. Uh, on the whole, then, you can see that our students are potentially using a lot more social networks than we are. Why are they using them? And is there a way that we can focus and engage our students, not necessarily using social networks, but certainly some of the subjects specific, the LinkedIn, the Moodle, and things like that. So, what should we conclude this before I hand over to Danny? That we probably need to develop, well we do need to develop, literally, digitally literate students, capable of productively engaging online in their communities, because in the future, um, we are, our students are going to engage in these communities much more. They are digital natives, and we very often are digital immigrants. They've grown up with this technology, and we always are going to talk with an accent when we're online. So we need to reassess ourselves, and if we are going to engage our students, and we're going to widen their professional knowledge and understanding, we need to keep up with them. So, we need to reassess ourselves and see where we can go. Sorry. <laughs> Why? Because this is what happens on the internet in a minute. This is where the information is. This is the future. Hi, so I'm just going to go back to the survey we did. And just picking up on some points that uh, Lindsay brought. I mean, if you actually look at this, most of it is social networking. And this is part of online community, but it's not all. So there's many more online communities that we can use that would be probably within our subject area theories that we would like to engage our students with. This is the stuff we have to work with and try to improve on. It looks like professionally, it might be, you know, it's the, the ones we need to engage with oops, that we are using and are able to get the students to work. We are forced. So what is preventing us from uh, expanding our area of online communities we are knowledgeable now and that we feel comfortable with? So I would like you to think about that for five minutes within the groups you are in. And we asked you at the beginning to log into your Google accounts. And already there, I, we saw a lot of resistance. So why, why do I have to log into my Gmail account and then connect to, to Google Plus? But I don't want to create a profile there. And so we are going to be talking a little bit about what are the barriers the, that prevent us from participating much more actively in online communities. But first we would like to hear from you what you think are the barriers that are preventing you from doing it. Okay? And then if you manage, and if you manage to connect to your uh, Gmail and to your uh, Google Plus, if you could share it with us, that would be great. So if you can find me, I will show you. Um, So, 
Maybe you can try to find me. Okay, my name is there, it's Daniela. And you can try to find me. And uh, your name is they can be, but it's not the only. Yes? You can. You're not so you're supposed to think about the barriers that come from using others that you're not Why are you not using more? Okay? More than one. In terms of student engagement. Not only. It's also about your knowledge. Area. So, for example, in your area of the research and teaching, are you using, um, taking full advantage of everything that's out there? And are you using that in your teaching? Yeah? And if you're not, why not? So the moment what we found is that you think about why you're not using it.
we, we are teaching. And then Google Plus, we did try to implement it, it didn't work, but it's a good place for all of us to actually start. I'm not like, a, you know, it's not like Google is everything, and there are a lot of problems with it, but it's, it has a lot of resources that gives you the first step to then look further into other options. So you can start, for example, your own web page within Google Plus, and then once you see uh, all the possibilities that it has, we'll also find restrictions, and that might lead you to find new options and new uh, solutions to the problems you find. And finally also, you will find uh, Brooks, um, obviously, solutions for this, and uh, you might have, uh, you might want to participate in one of the uh, courses that we offer, Brooks offers, for learning how to use online resources for your teaching. So we're going to finish off by thinking about how we might support students to engage productively in online communities. And I just wanted to show you this as a really nice visual resource, which again you can access um, once we've uploaded the presentation to Moodle. Um, it takes Bloom's taxonomy and all of those different skills and different apps that you might use um, to develop those skills with your students. So there's lots of information out there that you can find. Um, so <laughs> you were going to have five minutes, you've got 30 seconds <laughs> so a minute left. Um, in your group. Uh, can I ask one person from France's table to join the middle table please, just so we're even groups of five then. Um, to discuss um, the platform that you have on the sheets that I handed out, so they're upside down, please turn them over. And how you might, or how you currently engage with this online community or students. And how you might develop engagement with this online community or students. Please discuss the online community. How do you want to do Try to create a profile in Google Plus and try to connect with us. And what's your surname? What's your surname? Then I can. Santos Nunes. Santos Nunes. Really? Yeah. That's why I'm connected with two. I keep saying you. 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 I keep saying you.
Okay, so thank you for listening to through uh, my